Welcome to my studio and my Handcraft Your Life series where I show you how to take your beautiful handmade creations and integrate them into your life. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this gorgeous paper flower wedding bouquet. You can use this as a wedding bouquet. You can also make this into an arrangement for your centerpiece or, you know, as a gift for a friend. And in this bouquet, I'm using four different of our paper packs and they are the Gerber Daisy. I'm actually using two of those. However, I'm only using five of the flowers. So you'll have extras to do something else. I'm using all of the Dahlia flower pack. And then I'm using some pieces from the ferns and eucalyptus just to finish it out. Now, of course, if you don't have these packs, we have the links for all the SVG cut files or the PDF patterns so that you can cut them out yourself from whatever paper you want in any color you want. So let's get started. The focal point of this bouquet are these dahlias and I have all nine of them here. I may or may not use all of them in the bouquet, but we'll see how it all plays out. Since I only have two flowers, I probably will use all of them. The second focal point, I'm going to be adding in just three of these hot pink Gerber daisies. Since there's only two in a pack, I made three, you know, using two different packs and all the extra ones I'll use for something else. So I also have the leaves here. This is the dahlia leaf and I'm using all of those. And then I've put together the Gerber daisy leaf and I'm only using five of these. And what I did is I glued them onto a stem and then I took a little piece of paper scrap and glued that in on top to sandwich it because I was finding this leaf is so large it starts to fall off. I'm using all of the dahlia leaves from the pack and for this I've actually just sandwiched two leaves between some wire. So we have one dahlia pack two of the Gerber Daisy packs, but only using partial. And then what I've done is from the ferns and eucalyptus pack, I've actually pulled out some ferns and eucalyptus. So I've pulled two different colors. They're the really, I would say, middle of the road colors. They're um, not too bright, not too green. They're just that really beautiful natural green. This one's a bit darker, and then we have one that's just a touch lighter. And each one of these has three stems each. So there are a total of six of these stems, and this is the eucalyptus. In addition, to add just a bit more texture with my greenery, I've pulled these long ferns, just the long ones. I, I'm not doing the broad ones for this, just these little tiny delicates. And there are four each of these in the two colorways as well. But what I did for this is I've glued my wire almost all the way down my fern to this point. You can kind of see it on the back side, but it's okay because when you curl it, you won't see the wire much at all and it actually matches. And then I took my shorter fern and sandwiched the wire between at the bottom and also just curled that out a bit. So these are all ready to go. As far as these eucalyptus, I wanted to show you, I did the same thing on the back where I actually glued the wire almost to the tip so that I could have a really nice curl. So just a reminder, we have videos for this pack and for this pack, but if you are cutting them out with your cutting machine, we, you can go ahead and just follow along with the video because it will just show you exactly how to assemble both of those flowers. The materials that you'll need to make this bouquet outside of your leaves and your flowers might be some 24 gauge wire. And this is what I use to glue on the back of my stems. And this is not necessarily how we show you how to use them in the pack. I always keep some on hand. They make really great stem wire for leaves. So grab some of that and I added those onto the stems with the hot glue gun. I also might want to use some of my scissors. I have my curling tool just in case I, I curled some of these um, as I was making them. And then of course I have my heavy duty wire cutters which we will definitely need when we finish the bouquet and want to trim the stem. I also have here a beautiful stack of ribbon and I'll pick one of these, I'm not sure which color yet, that we'll use to wrap up the stem and I'll show you all of my techniques on how to do that. So I have three different colors of dahlias here. You can see them. We have a coral, we have this melon color, and then this blushy pink. And then I have this hot pink Gerber daisy. And I'll start with this uh, melon color in the center because I do want to place one of these Gerber daisies close by and then we'll start building up the bouquet. It's really important that the Gerber daisy, I'll set it in a triangle. And then I'm just going to start adding some leaves. And we don't, in this bouquet, we have more flowers than leaves. This is gonna be a very lush 
bouquet. I do like having little pops of this yellow, especially close to the Gerber Daisy. So I'll add some of those in. And then we'll just start building out how the flowers will lay in the bouquet. And I'm holding the handle here and I'm tipping my heads forward so that I can see exactly how this is going to look. You see how I folded that leaf downward so that it's placed almost underneath the dahlia? I don't want my heads to be too crowded. So as I start building things out, I'll move them around just a bit. And I think I do want the Gerber daisies to sit a bit tighter inside the bouquet and let that be a secondary focus where the dahlias are really the main focus. And you can see how I'm just holding everything in my hand and placing it gently. They can be moved around and you know we can bend the heads a bit more as we go. So this is a really fun process of just being creative, really. I think I'm gonna put another Gerber Daisy right over here. They're such big heads that you, ha you really have to be kind of gentle and work them as you go. There we go. Slide that one in a bit more. And then I think I want my last Gerber Daisy to be down here. And once that's in place, I can really see how things are building out. And then I'll start adding some leaves in between because I want, I want to give them all a little bit more space. So it's a little game of moving things around and moving them around again and kind of playing back and forth. Let's see, I think I would like to put this flower right down here. I'm liking how that's looking. And since I don't have as many leaves for this bouquet, I may just go ahead and get all of these put in first. And then I'll add my final three dahlias probably towards the back to help give some structure because we need to keep things sort of pulled out. I chose not to use quite as many leaves for this bouquet because we have so many large heads of, of uh, dahlia. It just seemed like it would get a bit crowded. Let's see, let's slide one right in here and just peek it through. That's all we need is just a peek. Now these dahlias, they don't have to be showing quite as much the ones that are in the back because they're really a bit more for support and you can just see the edge of it and that's really all you need. Since these wires are so tiny, things tend to slide around. But again, once you have the basic structure, you can always go back and move things around once you have everything taped. So that's looking pretty good. I have two more dahlias, which I'll add in and then we'll finish it up with some greens. Let's see, I don't want that one there. Let's do this one here. So you can also tuck things in further if you need to or pull things out. I, I'm noticing that a lot of my bouquet is on a similar plane, so it's almost a ball. I'm going to go ahead and add the leaves first and then decide if I want to change that up a bit. Since I don't have quite as much variety, it may just work out better that way. All right, now I'm going to add these greens and these are really fun. This is where we're gonna you know, add, this is where we'll get the dimension because it gives some drape. When you slide things between, you just kind of let your hand open up just a bit so that you can feel it come through and grab it. So I like that. We have two here and one here. It'll be kind of cascading out of the middle. And since I like this, I'll just continue adding some back here as well. So now I've created kind of a triangle. We have three, two, and one, and I think that looks really pretty. And again, you can see how with all these large flowers, having these little teeny tiny uh, fern pieces really do add, it almost needs that smaller texture to offset the, you know, the pointiness of the petals here. Now I noticed since I have some darker leaves here, I do want this lighter one. I'll slide it through. And I'm continuing with this formation of a triangle. So we have, you know, one, two, three. And you can't see these right now, but they will come back when we get it all put together. We can, you know, pull those towards the front. And then I want some hanging here as well. And maybe another one right here. And let's see, so I have two more. And I think for now, I'm going to go ahead and put them right here at the bottom. Now one of the things that I forgot to list on materials you'll need is your floral tape. So this is where you want your floral tape and I like to use floral tape because it will really hold these together. So here's the floral tape and I just picked a standard green color. It will be covered up and it won't be showing so much, but what I'll want to do 
is bind this as tightly as I can. And the floral tape works the best because it sticks to itself and it really does help you keep all of your parts and pieces together. So let's see. It's a little tricky to get started, so maybe start a bit down the stem so you can reach everything and you can always go back up. So as I wrap my stem, I'm stretching and that will activate so that it will stick to itself. And before I go any further, what I do want to do is cut all of my stems. So I figure a good handle might stop about here. I'll go ahead. You might want to put your safety glasses on for this because these wires fly. And cut them all the same length. And once these are cut, I'll go ahead and finish with more floral tape. So one of the things I've noticed I, I am really liking the way that this bouquet looks. I'm going to rearrange it a bit, but what I've noticed when I turn it over, I do have this blank space here that I'm not enjoying quite as much as I thought I would because as I was making the bouquet, I didn't necessarily turn it over to look on the back. So I have an idea. How about we take some of our extra Gerber daisies and put them on the back to kind of cover that. They match the color palette and they have a really nice, beautiful flat head. So let's see how that looks. Now this is an option. You can also fill this with leaves if you want to. So I'm gonna bend that to kind of fit and fill, which I like this because it's flat and this is where the bouquet will be against the dress. Go ahead and cut that. I think that looks pretty good. Let's get one more. So I picked the coral color and then the yellow color just to add some variety. And that, that really finishes the bouquet. Again, you can use the Gerber daisies. You can add some more leaves if you want to. Whatever the case, I love to have the bouquet looking good on all sides, so if you place it in a vase during the wedding, it looks really good to everybody. And I'll go ahead and tape that right onto the stem. When I get down here to the bottom, I want to make sure that all of the wires are wrapped so that it won't scratch anyone's hand. This one I wanna cut just a bit shorter and then this is, my, this is my trick on how I fix that. You'll take your floral tape. We'll be covering this floral tape with ribbon, so don't worry that it's a bit sticky, but I just want to make sure none of these wires are exposed. So I go all the way to the bottom, and then I'll take another piece of tape, short tape, and I'm going to wrap it vertically up and around the stem. Then another piece of tape, and we'll wrap it back up to make for sure that that's really secure. And there's the stem. Okay, now that I have everything bound together, this is where I get to go in and make some rearranging. And I wanna make sure that all of these ferns and these eucalyptus fall really nicely. They don't look caught. I like some of them cascading out of the middle of the bouquet and then some of them coming out from under. Make sure all the flowers' heads are turned the way that I want them. This one seems a bit high, so I'm actually just gonna shimmy that down just a bit. This one again, maybe a little high. So I'll go underneath and then just kind of bend the stem just a bit to get it into place. This one, I want it to come forward a bit, so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just sort of rearranging and making it as perfect as possible. So I don't want these to hang straight off the front. I want them to come to the side, make sure that happens. And maybe some of these can come down just a bit. I like this one starting up here and then these kind of cascading. And just to bring some balance, I'm pulling this head down to match the level here. And I think that looks pretty beautiful. So the last step that we will do is to go ahead and wrap the stem. One thing I'm gonna do on this side, since this is going to be against the dress, I'll go ahead and tuck that back down into the bouquet. There we go, that's nice and flat. Okay, so which ribbon should we use? We have three different colors here. I have this sort of pink color that matches the Gerber daisies. I think that's really pretty. We have a pale green that matches the Gerber daisy leaf, which we could do, or we have just more of a natural green. I'm kind of thinking let's go for it and let's do the pink. 
So I'm turning it over, I'm very carefully laying it on the table. You can maybe put some sort of padding under that if you want to, because I need to set it down. This might be a time where you want to wash your hands and get all the sticky wax off your hands. The ribbon that I'm using is actually this beautiful silk ribbon, and it's one of my favorites. I get it from a place called May Arts. So what I'll do is I'll measure about, I would say, six inches, and I'm going to just hold that right at the very top of the bouquet. And it's actually pretty sticky, so it will, it will stay there. Now I'm going to go down at an angle, just very carefully wrap my stem. Go all the way down. You can see I'm right here at the tip, and then I'll go right back up again. And I think there's something about this silk ribbon that just makes it really easy. I don't, I don't want to carry this all the way up, so I'm going to go ahead and snip it. I'm going to, I'm about halfway up, and I'm going to say maybe another foot, and then we'll wrap it. At this point, I tend to not do a lot of bows on my bouquets. If you want a bow, you might want a longer ribbon to create that bow, or you can actually add a bow in on top of this if you wanted to. So once I have it pretty much all the way wrapped. You might want to have somebody else help you do this, but do a straight square knot. So we have the lower and we have the upper. You want to take the lower and wrap the upper over the top, and that will make your knot really straight and square so it doesn't go crooked. Okay, we have that done. Now I'll take my really sharp scissors that work well with fabric because this ribbon is so silky. Fold it in half, the end edge upward towards the fold edge, and that will make a nice point. Same thing here. I want it to be the same length so I can hold it over here so I can see, and the edge up to the fold to make the point. And there you have the ribbon. So here is the final bouquet, and I think it looks pretty gorgeous. Now, I was thinking that this could be a late summer, early fall bouquet, but I think you could actually use this any time of the year. And remember, when you're making your paper flowers from our kits or our crepe paper or any of our patterns, make sure and hashtag Made with Leah because we love to follow along on your creative journey.